Welcome back. My name is Jason Shapiro. I'm a Java instructor with Intertech, and this is the third and final part of the introduction to the Google Web Toolkit. Now, in the previous part, we were looking at starting to create our own GWT module using the Application Creator tool. We're going to continue on that path, but before we do, let's just take a brief review of MVC. So what is MVC? It stands for Model View Controller, and it's an architectural design pattern. If we were to break up these uh, different components, they, we would have the controller. This is our code that's used to look at an incoming request and decide what should happen. The model is our business logic, typically um, plain old Java objects, perhaps EJBs. Uh, that's where all of our business logic lives, is in the model view. Mo excuse me, model layer. The view is where all of our graphical user interface logic lives. So anything that we want to do to paint a screen. A typical uh, arrangement is that the controller is a servlet, the model is your plain old Java objects, and the view is a JSP. Why do we separate these? Well, basically it's just to decouple layers and responsibilities. So this will promote reuse. For example, uh, if I have some, you know, sound business logic in my model view, I won't need to rewrite it if we want to access this application in a different way. So perhaps we were accessing the application through a web interface, but now we want to have a standalone desktop um, rich client to access it. I won't need to change, theoretically, all of the, you know, details in the model. I'll just add another controller and another view. So it promotes reuse. Also allows us for ease of maintenance, just as having our code separated so that we can uh, allow people who are particularly good at graphical user interfaces to work on the view, uh, while not bothering the people that are working on the model or the controller. And of course we're able to swap out parts without having to touch the entire code base. Now you don't have to create this all by scratch. There are some popular MVC frameworks that are available, such as Struts and Spring MVC. So here's an example of a typical interaction um, between the different layers. A uh, request will come in from a web browser and it will go to our servlet. That's our controller. The controller looks at that request and decides what it needs to call inside of the model. So it calls some business logic inside the model and uh, something happens, perhaps a customer account is retrieved from a database and placed into a Java bean so that we can transfer it amongst the labels or layers. And finally, that information that's sent back from the model is passed on to the view, and the view creates a nice graphical page, some sort of a web page for the user. It's probably a JSP, and that's returned to the incoming request. Now there are several different ways that the MVC uh, flow can happen. I just gave you one particular example. Um, the main important thing, the main goal that we're trying to make here is that we really want to separate the model as much as we can, decouple it from any of the presentation logic. So in the, we are able to best do that by having the incoming uh, request uh, that's tied to a particular technology, say maybe HTTP, um, to be in the controller level and any sort of response that we're going to give back is in the view um, for the presentation. That way the model can just uh, blissfully be unaware of um, what kinds of requests are coming in. So how does that relate back to GWT? Well if you remember when we ran Application Creator several files were created for us, one of which was an HTML file. And here we have a script call that's going to call into um, basically a controller that was created for us by GWT. That's going to take care of deciding what browser came in, which uh, versions of the generated JavaScript files should be sent back to the user. So that's our controller. That's going to be the controlling logic. And that in turn is going to call into uh, the start of our view, which is our entry point. Uh, notice the, me the method called onModuleLoad. If you remember from the last part, that's our main method. And this is where we start to draw our view. Um, there could be some controlling logic in here as well um, that goes back and gets some information from the model. And we will look at some RPC functionality in just a little bit, how we're able to call back and forth 
passing objects back and forth between the client side JavaScript and the uh, model code on the server. After we had run Application Creator, we also decided to use that program called Project Creator. And that created for us basically all the files that we need to import this into Eclipse easily. So what I'm going to do is import. And I'm going to import an existing project. I'm going to find that to-do list folder I made. And you'll see it, that it recognized it as an Eclipse project, and that's because we ran that project creator tool. So I say finish, open this up, and I have everything I need to run GWT. So let's just test that this is working as expected. When we created the project, one of the things that should have happened is we should have a uh, run configuration that was created for us. So if I look under Java application, sure enough there's to-do list. You'll know that the main class that they're using is the GWT shell. That's something that was provided for us. So let's just run this and see if it works. Great, the shell popped up. I did see a firewall. Let's unblock that. There we go. Now everything's working as expected. I see the sample application that was created when we ran Application Creator. So everything's working great. Now let's start to look at all the different aspects of our code and modify it a little bit so that we can create a to-do list. So let's review. We used Application Creator to create the basic directory tree structure and some of the default files that we need for a GWT module. Then we use Project Creator to create the Eclipse project files, enabling us to easily import our code into Eclipse. So now we're ready to, keep to code, to finish up our project. But before I do that, I want to see what widgets are available to me, um, so that when I'm designing my to-do list, I use things that already exist. That's one of the benefits of using GWT. And one of the, the best ways to see this is to go into your samples directory. This is a part of your GWT binary that you installed. So I'll go into Showcase, and what I'm going to run is the Showcase shell. So up pops our shell, and here is the browser. OK, so what Showcase provides for us is just a really nice way to take a look at all the different widgets that are available. Not just widgets, but also uh, panels, tables, uh, lists and menus. So on the left side, I've got all of my different widgets. On the right side, we'll see examples and source code. So let's think about the to-do list. What do I want this to look like? Well, I want basically on the bottom to just have a simple uh, list of names and due dates. Names and due dates. Probably uh, a button to edit that field and, or that row and a delete button as well. Above that, probably some sort of a text box so that I can input a new to-do item. So I would need to be able to add a um, a task item and a due date. Pretty simple. So obviously what am I going to need? I'm going to need uh, a table. So let's take a look at some of these tables. Open that up. Looks like I got two tables out of the box. I have a grid table. What is that? Well, it looks like just a simple table. That may be okay. I'm not sure if that's exactly what I want. What's a flex table? 